everybody, it's Jason with Parallel Reality coming back with you here today with an article from Fox News dated April 30th, so a few days ago from the time I'm re uh, recording this, but I wonder if this is something any of you have seen out there. I saw this on Twitter uh, by Bill Malugan, who is this name right here. It's not the picture of the guy, but he does mostly reporting uh, on the border crisis that's happening, and I saw his tweet about this in the article that was linked, and I was just like, holy crap. <laughs> I hope people get more aware of this. So the title of the article says, DHS docs reveal where paroled migrants under controversial Biden flight program are landing. So if you don't think this is, uh, the southern border invasion is something that is being done intentionally, well, this should change your mind. So let's get into it. <clears throat> it says exclusive. A Department of Homeland Security, or DHS data, is revealing the more than 45 cities in the United States that hundreds of thousands of migrants have flown into via a controversial parole program for four nationalities, with the vast majority entering the U.S. Air via airports in Florida. Wonder why they're targeting Florida. So during an eight-month period from January through August 2023, roughly 200,000 migrants flew into the U.S. via the program. Of those, 80% of them, or 161,562, arrived in the state of Florida in four cities, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, and Tampa Bay, according to DHS data obtained via a subpoena by the House Homeland Security Committee and provided to Fox News. The policy was first announced for Venezuelans in October 2022, which allowed a limited number to fly or travel directly into the U.S. as long as they had not entered illegally, had a sponsor in the U.S. already, and passed certain biometric and biographical vetting. The program does not itself facilitate flights, and migrants are responsible for their own travel. So how'd they get the money to pay for it, I guess, if they're responsible for their own travel? Especially if they're coming from Venezuela, which, if you know anything about what's uh, been happening there the last decade or so, is not the richest country, at least for the common folks. <clears throat> this is in January 2023, the administration announced that the program was expanding to include Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Cubans, and that the program would allow up to 30,000 people per month into the U.S., it allows for migrants to receive work permits and a two-year authorization to live in the U.S. It was announced alongside the expansion of Title 42 expulsions to include these, those nationalities. By the end of February 2024, more than 400,000 nationals have arrived under the parole program, program, according to Customs and Border Protection data. That's the CBP for when it comes up again, undoubtedly. <clears throat> so DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, who should not have a job there, recently said the program is a safe and orderly way to reach the United States and has led to a reduction in numbers of those nationalities. Is a key element of our efforts to address the unprecedented level of migration throughout our hemisphere, and other countries around the world see it as a model to tackle the challenge of increased irregular migration that they too are experiencing, Mayorkas said. It says the top 15 cities migrants flew into during the eight-month window are, and I'm not going to read every figure here, but we'll go down from the top. Um, it says Miami, Fort Lauderdale, New York City, Houston, Orlando, LA, Tampa, Dallas, San Francisco, Atlanta, Newark, Washington, Chicago, Las Vegas, and Austin. Does DHS also revealed in the subpoena response that as of October 2023, there were about 1.6 million applicants waiting for DHS approval to fly into the U.S. via the parole program. And I'm sure they'd let everybody in if they could, because that's just what happens now. So as DHS said in its subpoena response, all individuals paroled into the United States are, by definition, inadmissible, including those paroled under CHNV processes. Did it say what the CHNV was? I uh, don't think it did, but... Uh, Let's keep going down here. It says, Homeland Security Committee Chair Mark Green, who was the dude in the picture I just passed out, argues that the program exceeds parole powers put in place by Congress. The authority is to be used on a case-by-case -case basis for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit. This seems like this is just another one of the things that the Biden administration is doing, which is like they're taking an actual law and they're just trying to do some sort of end around around the law. Like they're trying to, uh, um, you know, they'll, they'll figure out like what's like the... Uh, I don't know, like, how can we get around this thing? And, like, how can we use it to our advantage then? Stuff like that. Instead of, like, just, this is the law, this is what it is. Kind of like Supreme Court said you can't do the uh, student loan forgiveness thing. And they're like, no, we're still going to do it anyway. <laughs> you know? 
So it says, these documents expose the egregious lengths Secretary Mayorkas will go to ensure inadmissible aliens reach every corner of the country, from Orlando and Atlanta to Las Vegas and San Francisco, he said in a statement. Secretary Mayorkas' CHNV parole program is an unlawful sleight of hand used to hide the worsening border crisis from the American people, implementing a program that allows otherwise inadmissible aliens to fly directly into the U.S., not for significant public benefit or urgent humanitarian reasons as the Immigration and Nationality Act mandates, has been proven an impeachable offense. And yeah, we tried that already and it didn't work, but he should absolutely not have a job again because he's like, go just go look into his background. The guy is a far leftist and he worked, I believe, for NGOs that were um, wanting open borders. And then Biden put him in charge here. And then he's like, oh no, the border's secure. And it's like, dude, we can, like, you're telling us to not believe the evidence of our, li- of, of our eyes that we can see right in front of us. <laughs> but whatever. He then made reference to the House's efforts to impeach Mayorkas, and the chamber impeached him, but the Senate has not held a trial in the articles. And I, I think I saw that they're not going to, because, well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it says, following our subpoena and the House's impeachment vote, especially in light of the Senate's complete failure to fulfill its duty to hold a trial, the committee will not rest until this administration is finally held accountable for its open borders agenda and its devastating impact on our homeland security, he said. Green's arguments against the program have been echoed in a lawsuit by multiple states who have sued to block the program. The 20 states argued that it amounts to the creation of a new visa program that allows hundreds of thousands of aliens to enter the United States who otherwise have no basis for doing so. The lawsuit was struck down by a district judge, but states have appealed. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' administration has repeatedly said it is confident the lawsuit will ultimately be successful. He said Biden's uh, parole program is unlawful and constitutes an abuse of constitutional authority. Florida is currently suing Biden to shut it down, and we believe that we will prevail, Press Secretary Jeremy Redfern told Fox News. The DHS has said those who enter the U.S. under the program undergo a clear, undergo a, and clear, a, okay, there we go, I thought that, that sounded funny, so I'll repeat that from the beginning. It says, DHS has said that those who enter the U.S. under the program undergo and clear a robust security vetting as well as other eligibility criteria. You can really do that with 30,000 people a month? Like, how many agents do you have working that? It seems like, I mean, that's, what is that, 360,000 people a year? Um, like, okay. <laughs> I don't think it's that robust, but sure. <clears throat> so these processes are publicly available online, and DHS has been providing regular updates on their use to the public. These processes are part of the administration's strategy to combine, to combine expanded lawful pathways and stronger consequences to reduce irregular migration and have kept hundreds of thousands of people from migrating irregularly, a spokesperson told Fox News Digital this month, and I think that might be the end of the article. Yep, it is. Okay, it kind of just ends, but um, I love how they sit here and they're like, no, nothing, you know, like, like this last statement here. It's like, it's, uh, you know, kept hundreds of thousands of people from migrating irregularly. No, they're still coming. I mean, you can just look at, like, what's happening at the border. Like, how many people was it that, that, that have been let in since Biden took over? It was, like, 11 million or some obscene number. It's like, no, obviously whatever you guys are doing is not working, and, like, we can see it. So don't try to sit here and, you know, tell us again that to not believe the evidence of our lying eyes, you know, because, again, we're looking at the evidence, and you guys are like, no, nope, everything's cool. So... Uh, given the fact that these guys, let's see here, I want to go back up to those numbers, and my mouse is being a little weird here, so I'll have to click on everything. So they're going into Florida, okay, New York, and then Texas, Florida, Florida, Texas, you know, yeah, since a lot of Texas down here, but that's only 171 to Austin, and Austin's already kind of blue anyway, not kind of, it is. But they're flying, I mean, that's 150,000 plus people into Florida. Gee, I wonder why they're doing that. Okay, and Texas has a bunch on here as well. I mean, they're probably, yeah, that's over 10,000 people. Why are they doing that to Texas? I wonder why. Oh, here's Orlando as well. If we have that, I mean, they're heading on, what is that? So it's 156, 57,000 people, something like that, probably 158,000 even. I mean, I wonder why they're doing it to Florida and Texas. So anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I mean, this I think this kind of blew my mind a little bit. And I'd go check out, uh, if I were you, if you have an X account, go to Bill Malugan's Twitter and look, because that's all, like I said at the beginning, that's all the stuff that he reports on. But I think that this is, uh, oh, there's the C, what CHNV means, is Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. All right, I missed that at the very beginning. Um, my fault. But anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.